Hello again, time for a video. I'm just doing a bit of work on my site and on the, uh, the Telegram group. And uh, we've just got the results from the previous exam. And I have to uh, say it's uh, looking quite good. Many of the members have uh, achieved a, a solid B in writing. So things seem to be working quite well. So with that in mind, I'm going to continue for the next uh, was it week or so until the next exam. I think it's next weekend. So it's just over a week. I think it's, I don't know, it's 10 days, maybe a week. So we're going to have a look at some more writing. Uh, I've got one here which we'll have a look at and uh, I'll put this video on YouTube and I'll also put the link to it in the, uh, the Telegram group. Okay, so we'll save some changes, make sure the changes are on. Okay, okay. So, uh, thank you for seeing Mr. Collister, a 45-year-old factory foreman. Okay, okay. So this is the first uh, thing, right? If you've got the DOB here, we don't really need a repetition. You know, we can, we can count. Okay. Factory foreman. Now, how is this pertinent in any way? Now, if you're going to draw some inference from his job, and I believe in the case uh, notes, I've, I've seen these on several occasions. I think one of the things about this in reference to the job is that he's uh, under a lot of pressure at work which is making him tired and stressed, which obviously may have a con concomitant effect on his uh, condition. However, if you're just going to say, oh, he's a, um, a factory guy, she's a typist, etc., without drawing any, con any conclusion or inference, it's kind of a waste of time. So I would not do that here. Who has been suffering? Has been suffering? Well, is is suffering still, I suppose you could use uh, that as well. You could use uh, present continuous instead of uh, present perfect continuous. Okay. Uh, but what do you want now? I keep, I keep on, on saying this. In my task, it tells you what you've got to do, you know, why you are writing to the person. What is it that you want them to, uh, to do? And I think from the case notes, um, I'm, I'm not, I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, but if it says something like confirm a diagnosis or carry out extra tests, etc. Okay, so, you know, make sure the request is clear. Uh, I am writing to request your diagnosis of Mr. So-and-so. I'm writing to... Uh, request that you assess blah 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 you know okay so it's got to be clear right from the start what it is you want the, the reader to do so thank you for seeing Mr Collister but what is it you want me to do further management now this expression don't use it it's a cliche right I've seen this in a thousand uh, letters everybody uses it until they learn otherwise your further a management will be highly appreciated. Highly appreciated by whom? By the patient? Well, I suppose so. Appreciated by you? Well, he's not doing you a personal favour. Is he lending you uh, a money? No. So why would it be highly appreciated? Don't use these cliched, memorised sentences, phrases. Examiners know that these aren't, you know, it's not communication. They know you are simply repeating a memorized expression. Okay, okay, now this next part. Mr. Costa is married with three children. Uh, uh, so what? That's uh, gonna affect how I uh, treat Mr. Collister how? Exactly. What's that got to do with me? Okay, please note he doesn't have any known allergies. Why are you telling me what he doesn't have? Why don't you tell me what he does have? You know, it's like you would only mention this if someone has an allergy. Please note he is allergic to blah, blah, blah. So in case of treatment, I wouldn't give him 
something which might kill him, etc. But to tell me, oh, please, uh, you know, it's like, I see this often, please, please note that Mrs. So-and-so neither drinks nor smokes. Well, if she doesn't do it, why are you telling me what she does or doesn't do? Tell me what she does, not what she doesn't do. Only if it's, it's pertinent. And also we've got a short sentence here with no introduction. So usually people put, you know, in terms of social history, but only if it's pertinent, Mr. Collister, blah, 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 blah. Uh, in terms of his medical history, please note he has been treated for, etc., etc. Okay. So you usually put some, some kind of gambit or phrase to introduce your paragraphs and sentences. Don't simply drop in a sentences, drop in uh, information without drawing anything out of it, drawing any conclusions or saying this means this, etc. Because it's it's pointless. Uh, okay, well that's told me some very useful information. Not really. Okay, so. On 22nd at 3rd, Mr. Corris attended the clinic with a complaint of productive cough, or was it a productive cough, a productive cough, and a sore throat. Therefore, I advised him. Now, advice is a noun. Let me give you some advice. Advice, sorry, sorry. Advise, with an S, is a verb. Therefore, I am advising you to be careful with advice and advise. Therefore, I advise him to take rest, drink on a few words, and salt water. Now, right, right. This reads that you want him to drink salt water gargles. That's what this, um, this clause means. Drink plenty of fluids and salt water gargles. Now, I'm sure you want him to gargle with salt water, not drink salt water gargles. But this is what you have said. So, uh, drink plenty. Uh, fluids and gargle with salt water. Okay. Two months later, Mr. Cosby presented with a rotator cuff tear. Now, don't forget these articles. A cough, a sore throat, a rotator cuff tear, a pain in the ass, etc. If it's singular, it can be countered, use an article. And when you introduce something at, at first, use an indefinite article. As a result, ibuprofen was prescribed. Uh, well, it wasn't a result, is it? You, as a result, means he's got a rota rotated uh, cuff tear. And as a direct result of that tear, you prescribed him ibuprofen. But that's not really a direct result, is it? You decided, but it wasn't as a direct result or consequence. You know, and, you know, ibuprofen was prescribed, um, was prescribed by whom? Now, right, why do you have active, I advised him, and why is it passive here? Did, did you not prescribe it? Why is it passive? And he was referred. Why is that passive too? Why, if you've got, you know, he came to see you, so what did you do? He came to see you. What did you do? I prescribed him. I advised him. So, passive, passive, passive. Two days later, Mr. Coates attended with osteo... Uh, well, right, he, he attended with osteoarthritis, or he attended complaining of, of osteo... But how would he know it was osteoarthritis? Uh, you know, is he going to say, Oh, doctor, doctor, I've got osteoarthritis. He probably won't. So he attended... Com complaining of aches and pains, blah, blah, blah. Upon examination, you diagnosed that he had osteoarthritis. Therefore, I'd be proof, therefore, again, that means it's as a direct consequence of, but it's not. This happened as well, so you can say, and. So I prescribed him, blah, 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 blah. Why is it passive again? was advised, was prescribed, was prescribed, and he was advised, don't forget, noun verb, to decrease his weight and increase exercise. Now, you haven't said any, <coughs> sorry, 
You haven't said anything previously about him being a fatty. You haven't said anything about him being overweight. Now, you've got something here. He's overweighed, but oh, he's overweight, not overweighed. But why is it here? So, so presumably, uh, he is overweight, even though you haven't said. And presumably, also, he doesn't exercise. But you never said before that he didn't. Now, I seem to remember, let, let me think, let me think. Uh, Mr. Collister, isn't he the guy who likes doing playing darts and fishing? He doesn't do any strenuous physical activity. So, in in the history, right? Instead of saying he's married with three kids, which who cares? Oh, just hang on a sec. There's somebody with a loudspeaker outside of my my window. Hang on. All oh, right. Anyway. Sorry, some uh, noise from outside. Uh, so, as I was saying, right, right, from the social history, you would say something about uh, he's uh, under stress, pressure because of his job, which, you know, might affect how he is, how he feels, because, you know, all these visits, he's tired, 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 tired. So, you'd, you know, so if you mention that at the start, in the history paragraph, that kind of, you know, fills out the gaps in the letter. Okay, so instead of he's got three kids but married, who cares? Um, he's got a stressful job. He doesn't take any serious physical activity because fishing, you are sitting on your ass. It's not the same as, uh, as jogging or cycling, is it? So you need to say right at the start that he is... Um, He's overweight, under pressure, stress, that's making him tired, being overweight is affecting him too, he doesn't do any exercise, you know, so that would like fill in the background to the rest of it, yeah? Okay, okay, so Mr. Costa reported he had been feeling tired and dizzy, additionally he suffered from orthostatic hypertension, furthermore, his... why have we got four sentences? You could have put this in like one or two sentences. Why is it for? Why do we ha and also right? You want to avoid overuse of discourse markers. Therefore, additionally, furthermore, try to avoid this because that's not good. Overuse. If you look at the criteria, it does say overuse of discourse markers. You're not supposed to have one at the beginning of every, every sentence. Additionally, furthermore, moreover, therefore. If you do that, that's going to get you marked down. So we've got four short sentences. We could have put that into two, maybe four. Sorry, uh, two, maybe one. Additionally, furthermore, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, so, so I would put those into a couple of, uh, of sentences. Today, why is this, uh, what's this, past perfect, had, had been still feeling, okay? Had been still feeling tired? So uh, today, he reported still feeling tired but had been had been still feeling tired that doesn't work today mr collister um reported still feeling tired or he presented uh complaining of constant constant tiredness or something uh furthermore why furthermore simply and also he now right a decrease here, it's a noun, a decrease in his vision function. So we need an article, you know, a decrease and increase. If you want to make a, a verb, uh, a decreasing in his vision function. His blood test revealed an increase in the random glucose level. Uh, why is this increasing? Why do you have increase, increase in Increase. All you've got to do is say an increase in random blood glucose level in the fasting glucose level and put a comma there and in the cholesterol. And so we've got level, 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 in, you know, in the fasting glucose. So we've got increase, 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 level, level, level. 
Therefore, he was diagnosed. Who diagnosed him? Was it some random, random doctor who was wandering around? Oh, these results I diagnosed. No, you did it. You diagnosed it. Why is it passive again? Okay. In view of the above, I refer this patient into your care. For what? You haven't told me what you want me to do yet. You haven't said, what is it you want me to do? Do you want me to manage his blood sugar? Do you want me to confirm a diagnosis? What is it you want me to do? So, if you need further information, blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay. So, hmm, a few things I would have a think about. I'll leave it all there, and I'll put this in, in the group on Telegram. So, I hope that helps. I don't wish to be overly harsh but uh, you know if you want me to be honest there you go so i'll see you later bye for now